Before we explore the secrets hidden in this curve, let's address a fundamental question, what exactly are stress and strain? Stress, imagine you're trying to pull or push on a material, like stretching a rod. The stress is the intensity of that force you're applying, say load on the rod is P, diameter of the rod is equal to D, therefore cross-sectional area of the rod equals to pi by 4 into d square. Therefore stress on rod will be equals to 4 into p by pi into d square. It's measured in megapascals, MPA, here, which is a unit of pressure. Stress is denoted by Greek letter sigma. Strain this represents how much the material deforms in response to that stress. So, if you pull on the rod, the strain is how much it stretches compared to its original length. Let knowledge flow like a river, without any hindrance. Don't make it like a stagnant pool. Hey everyone! I think all of you are okay. It's P.S. Chaturji here, and I'm fired up to be back with your channel, Structural Design Only, a channel with a different vision. As a structural engineer with a passion for sharing knowledge, I'm not just here to talk theory. I can also show you how to put it into practice with tools like STAD Pro, Excel, and even how to efficiently interact with powerful AI assistants like Gemini. But here's the thing, while I can bring the expertise, building a strong foundation of knowledge takes teamwork. That's where you, the amazing civil and structural engineering community, come in. By watching these videos all the way through, liking, sharing, and subscribing, you're helping me create a library of valuable resources for everyone. Think of it as an investment in your own success. The more this channel grows, the more in-depth content I can create, including those practical demonstrations you crave. Imagine having a one-stop shop for mastering structural design concepts, software tools, and even interacting with cutting-edge AI. All thanks to this collaborative effort. So, let's roll up our sleeves and build this community together. Let's empower each other to become the best civil and structural engineers we can be. Hit that subscribe button, like and share this video, and join the conversation in the comments below. Consider this video our starting point, like setting the coordinates on a graph. Today, we'll be focusing on the fascinating world of steel's elasticity. Get ready to dive deep. Next slides will unlock the detailed discussion. Before we explore the secrets hidden in this curve, Let's address a fundamental question, what exactly are stress and strain? Stress, imagine you're trying to pull or push on a material, like stretching a rod. The stress is the intensity of that force you're applying, say load on the rod is P, diameter of the rod is equal to D, therefore cross-sectional area of the rod equals to pi by 4 into D square. Therefore stress on rod will be equals to 4 into P by pi into D square. It's measured in megapascals, MPA, here, which is a unit of pressure. Stress is denoted by Greek letter sigma. Strain, this represents how much the material deforms in response to that stress. So, if you pull on the rod, the strain is how much it stretches compared to its original length. Say original length of the rod is L, length under strict condition LX, 
now increment in length is equal to lx minus l and increment in length over the original length is equals to lx minus l by l. It's basically a ratio, so it doesn't have any units. Strain is denoted by Greek letter epsilon. This image is a graphical representation of the relationship between stress and strain in a material. If you take a closer look at the curve, you'll see several small circles marking important points. The very first circle represents a crucial point called the proportional limit. Young's modulus, the material's stiffness. Now that we've explored stress and strain, let's introduce another crucial concept, Young's modulus, also known as the modulus of elasticity. Imagine a stiff spring. Think of Young's modulus as a measure of a material stiffness. The higher the Young's modulus, the stiffer the material is, just like a strong spring that resists bending easily. Young's modulus relates stress, force per unit area, to strain, deformation. In simpler terms, it tells us how much a material stretches or compresses under a specific load. A higher Young's modulus indicates the material needs a greater force to achieve the same level of deformation. Steel stiffness, a number. For engineers, Young's modulus is a vital property. Now, let's talk specifics. Steel is known for its stiffness, and its Young's modulus is typically around 200,000 MPa. Remember, MPa is a unit of pressure commonly used in engineering. This high Young's modulus value tells us that steel is very resistant to bending or stretching under normal loads. This makes it a popular choice for building structures like bridges and buildings that need to be strong and stable. As we delve deeper into the fascinating world of structural analysis, you'll see just how important Young's modulus becomes. It's a fundamental property that helps us understand how structures behave under stress and design them to be safe and reliable. This proportional limit signifies the maximum load a material like steel can withstand and still return to its original shape after the load is removed. Think of it as a point of no return for perfect elasticity. Beyond this point, the material starts to deform permanently. This concept of the proportional limit is closely tied to Hooke's law, a fundamental principle in material science. Hooke's law tells us that stress and strain are proportional. In simpler terms, the more you stretch or compress a material within this elastic limit, the more it resists that force. This initial part of the curve beautifully showcases Hooke's law at work. Here, the steel deforms in direct proportion to the applied stress. Within the elastic limit, this proportionality can be expressed as sigma proportionality epsilon, sigma is proportional to epsilon. To equate this proportionality and determine the amount of deformation for a given stress, we need a constant. This constant is ES, also known as Young's modulus or modulus of elasticity. Proof stress, a practical benchmark. The proportional limit we discussed earlier tells us the maximum stress a material can handle and still spring back perfectly. But in the real world, engineers need to consider everyday loads a structure will experience. This is where proof stress comes in. Think of it this way, imagine you're designing a bridge. You want to be absolutely sure it can handle the weight of cars and pedestrians day in and day out without bending or warping permanently. Proof stress acts as a benchmark. It's a specific stress level that ensures the material remains within the elastic region under normal use. Taking a closer look at the curve. Now, 
let's revisit the stress strain curve we've been exploring. You might see two additional points marked on the curve, often referred to as the characteristic curve and the design curve. These points represent a crucial concept. Imagine drawing a line connecting these two points on each curve and extending it down to the x-axis, representing strain. This line signifies a specific amount of permanent deformation in the steel, typically around 0.2%. The stress value on the characteristic curve corresponding to this intersection point is what we call proof stress. By using proof stress as a benchmark, engineers can design structures that can withstand everyday loads without exceeding this permanent deformation limit. This ensures the bridge, building, or any structure maintains its shape and functionality over time. Proof stress is a more practical measure than the proportional limit for real-world applications. It provides a safety net, ensuring structures can handle everyday stresses without permanent bending or warping. Understanding steel stretch, the strain equation. In engineering, especially when dealing with steel structures, we often use equations to predict how the material behaves under stress. Today's equation helps us calculate a crucial property, strain in steel. Imagine stretching a steel rod. Epsilon Y, strain this epsilon Y represents the strain in the steel. It tells us how much the steel stretches, relative to its original length, when it reaches its yield stress. Think of stretching a steel rod. The higher the epsilon y value, the more the rod stretches at its yield point. 0.87, factor this is a constant value, typically around 0.87. It considers various factors that influence how steel stretches in real world situations. This factor helps refine the calculation for a more accurate prediction of strain. FY, yield stress this represents the maximum stress the steel can handle before it starts to deform permanently. It's like a limit for steel's elasticity. Imagine stretching the rod, the yield stress is the point where it can't spring back to its original shape if stretched further. Yes. Young's modulus this term tells us how stiff the steel is. A higher Young's modulus indicates the steel is stiffer and stretches less under the same stress. Imagine two steel rods, one with a higher Young's modulus. The stiffer rod, higher Young's modulus, will stretch less than the other rod when pulled with the same force. 0.002 Minor plastic strain this small value represents a possible minimal level of permanent deformation that might occur in the steel even before reaching the yield point. It's a way to account for slight imperfections in the material. Why is this important? By calculating strain, engineers can ensure steel structures don't deform excessively under normal loads. They design beams, columns, and other elements to remain within the elastic limit of the steel, preventing permanent bending or damage. This helps to ensure the safety and reliability of steel structures. Additional points. The exact value of the factor, 0.87, might vary slightly depending on the specific steel grade and design code used. The small term, 0.002, can sometimes be ignored, especially for initial calculations, because its influence is minimal. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Before we wrap up, I wanted to talk about something important for the future of this channel. As you know, the channel focuses on civil and structural engineering topics, which can be quite niche. 
While the content is valuable for engineers, it might not be the most engaging for everyone. Here's where you, my fellow engineers, come in. This channel is approaching 3,500 subscribers, which is fantastic. However, watch time is lagging behind. If you're an engineer and find this content valuable, please consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and leaving a comment below. Your engagement helps the channel grow and allows me to keep creating content specifically for you. Together, we can build a strong community for civil and structural engineers on YouTube. Thanks again for watching, and see you next time.